How's it going everybody? Thanks for stopping by. Back at you once again with another one of them Parrot Bebop 2 videos. And in this video, we're taking a look at flight planning. We're gonna go through everything from how to set up a flight plan. I'm gonna give you some tips on what I do when setting up a flight plan and making sure I'm comfortable with it. And then we're gonna actually go out and execute the flight plan. So this should be a good video. Thanks once again for stopping by. Let's get right into it. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, so let's take a look at this together, shall we? So we are in the Free Flight Pro app. We're gonna go ahead and select Flight Plan and get on in there. Then we're gonna hit this file icon so we can create a new flight plan. Note to that, we're gonna hit Bebop 2 because that's what we're flying. And here we are. So what you wanna do is locate where you want to create a flight plan, plan, obviously. So the beauty of this is you can be anywhere. You can be at home and set up your flight plan and go out and execute the flight plan. Now, here's what I recommend. I recommend setting up a flight plan somewhere where you have already physically flown. That way you're familiar with the obstacles that are around like trees, maybe buildings or wires, so you know kind of night and I you have an idea of how high you should be setting these altitudes uh, and where you should be launching from and landing from and all that good stuff okay so right, right. now we're looking at a park that I fly uh, quite a bit so I'm pretty familiar with it. it's a nice size little lake here a uh, little beach area over there so I'm really familiar with this so I know where I want to launch I know where I want to land and I kind of have an idea of what my course is going to be so what we're going to do now <clears throat> excuse me is we're just going to start popping in some uh, waypoints okay doesn't have to be fancy and then here's something you can do once you get to your last waypoint hold down the um, <clears throat> or long press there and then you're gonna click close so that'll get you a nice um, closed off uh, flight flight path okay and I think I'm gonna actually insert one more uh, waypoint in there and bring it out to there okay okay so you can see we have seven waypoints now the other thing you notice is the 10 the 10 represents the altitude so if you push on the waypoint you'll see this little uh, dial here on the side this allows you to increase and decrease altitude okay so that's what I was talking about in terms of being familiar with uh, trees and obstacles that may be in the area so you want to you want to be familiar with the area before you go out and fly okay now here's another cool thing you can do you can if you if you um, put both fingers uh oh my screen is locking up if you put both fingers on the screen you can pan the screen uh, down to uh, ground level okay not sure what happened there but my phone f froze up there for a second all right so you put your two fingers on the screen it allows you to pan all the way down to ground level and why is this helpful this is helpful because it kind of gives you a sense of how high your um, your quad will be okay and actually let me go back up let me do that better so that you can see this better so let's make this uh oh we locked it let's unlock it let's make this uh 167 let's go i'm just kind of indiscriminately um placing these so uh just for demonstration purposes okay so now let's go back down to, to ground level and see so you can kind of see how high that line is. See that line? Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea. I wouldn't rely on that 100%, uh, but I think it's a cool, cool feature nonetheless. Okay, so let's get back. Into okay, it. so another way you can change the altitude is you can long press the waypoint and then go into edit, and that allows you to be more precise. So you can enter a specific height so let's do 120 feet enter so you can do it that way as well uh, another thing you can do is push on the waypoint and you can change the direction that the quad will be facing okay so this is really really cool um, I'm gonna change this okay and so on and so forth okay, okay. now a couple quick things if you uh, tap on the uh, the line between your waypoints. It's gonna give you how fast the quad will be traveling. You can come down here and change that speed. You can go all the way up to 33 feet per second. So that gives you some um, 
creativity. You can be creative in changing speeds and direction that the quad is, is facing. So you can get really, really creative with this. I, I really like this uh, uh, flight plan uh, program. Okay, now if you long press there, you get some more options. Again, you can hit edit that can um, where you can enter in a specific uh, value. You can insert another waypoint. But here's what I really want to show you. I want to show you progressive course. Now, push on progressive course. You notice you get two more little small waypoints. Here's what that's doing. Now, when you place your waypoints, as the quadcopter goes through its progressions, it goes from waypoint to waypoint, it's gonna stop at the next waypoint and then turn to go to its next waypoint. So you're gonna see that in the video. If you don't want that, if you want it to be smooth or progressive, meaning it's gonna, it's gonna continue to move as it goes into its next waypoint, in the next waypoint and the next waypoint without that pause you're gonna you're gonna make it a progressive course and as you can see it will pretty much follow the waypoint that you placed direction of the quad so it'll be a progressive movement makes it very very smooth okay now once you've placed these waypoints you can move them all you just do is just tap on it and you can move them around um, very 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 intuitive I think to do this uh, I really, really like the flight plan uh, app here, if I haven't said that already. <laughs> and then the other thing you're going to get, if you tap on the waypoint, you'll see the distances between waypoints, which is, uh, which is pretty okay. cool as well. Something else very, very cool that you can do, point of interest. So let's do a point of interest right here. Okay, uh, that that ten again. <clears throat> that's altitude. <clears throat> so what's that? Sh what that's showing you? Excuse me, you guys. <laughs> so what that ten is showing you with the point of interest is that's showing you the altitude that the quad, the, the camera on the quad, will be pointed at. So that ten represents ten feet. So it's going to be pointed down. If you're up two hundred feet, it's going to be pointed pretty much um, down. Um, not quite straight down, but at a, at a pretty significant angle. So uh, what you can do, once again, is you can change the height uh, of uh, where the camera will be pointing at that point of interest, okay? And then come over here and hit the check mark. Okay, and you can do multiple points of interest. Uh, let's just do three here. Check it off there. Okay, point of interest. All right, let's change our altitudes. Always forget to hit that check button. Let's just change them. Check. And okay, had a sneaky notification there that I tapped by mistake. Okay, so those are our points of interest. Now, here's what you can do. Uh, tap on the point of interest that you want and then tap on the waypoints where you want the quad to focus on that point of interest. So we'll do those two and hit the uh, check mark. So once the quad reaches those uh, waypoints, they're gonna focus on that point of interest. Then let's, uh, let's do the same over here. We'll do that one and that one. And uh, let's go ahead and add a progressive here. We'll put them on all of them. Whoops. Might as well do that for all of them. Okay, now we have one more point of interest. So let's go ahead and add these two. And there you go. Isn't that cool? Uh, so you can zoom in, zoom out, so you can get a better idea of your uh, uh, overall uh, environment there. Okay, just a quick, uh, quick look at what the various icons here uh, represent. So this uh, padlock icon is to uh, lock and unlock the screen. So if you lock it, then you can't mess up any of your uh, waypoints. Um, so. That's a good feature. Uh, this one right here, we're gonna talk about this later, but this is gonna take you to uh, a different view that allows you to do some uh, really cool things with adding uh, pic automated pictures and uh, panning and so forth. Okay, and this one right here is gonna take you to your current location. This one changes your view, so it's gonna change it to um, like a street map. Uh, then it'll also have another view that will be the satellite map with um, with uh, street names, location names, and so forth. And then the, the file button just takes you to 
all of your uh, saved waypoints, allows you to uh, create new ones, delete old ones, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so now that we have all our waypoints set and our point of interest set, we have our uh, altitude and everything set. Um, oh, I forgot. Let's drill in here and see uh, what else we can do uh, to automate uh, automate this flight. Okay, so this uh, this page is going to show you basically all of your waypoints. It's going to show you uh, when and where you take off, and it's going to show you when and where you're going to land here. Um, so that's what these icons represent. That's take off. That's land. Um, and the one important thing that I want to make sure you uh, take note of is here. This is your total flight time. That's 13 minutes and 58 seconds. Now, obviously, that's very important to make sure you have enough uh, battery power to execute, to start and finish that, uh, that uh, flight plan and make it back to the home point. Now, another word about that. So when you do flight plans, it doesn't matter if you're connected to the Sky Controller 2 or to the app. Once you execute it, it's going to go ahead and finish that flight plan. And then it's going to come back and land wherever you set it to land. So that's, I think there's a good and a bad to that, right? The good thing is, you know, your flight plan won't be interrupted and you can really get some pretty good distances and get a lot of cool uh, footage and not have to worry about whether you have connection, whether it's gonna automatically return to, return to home if you lose the feed on your, um, on your phone uh, and, and the connection from the Sky Controller 2. So that is awesome. The thing that can be a bit precarious is if you have set up a flight plan and you don't have enough battery power to get back home, that could be bad. So, so again, that's why this right here is very, very important um, when you're setting up your uh, flight plan and actually uh, more so in executing that flight plan. Okay, so all of this red that you're seeing, that just means that uh, the quad will be recording. So you see the recording icon throughout the entire flight. Um, you see the points of interest. You see where along the flight plan the point of interest uh, will be. Then down at the bottom, this is gonna give you each of the waypoints and it's gonna give you the time it takes to get from one waypoint to another. Okay, now, and then there's where you land. Now, here's what you can do. This is super, super cool. Let's say you want to start taking pictures once you get to a certain part of the uh, uh, flight plan. And I didn't mean to do that, but here's what you can do. Pull that down and right at that point is where you're gonna take a picture. Now let's tap on it. So it's going to uh, actually take pictures at a 10 second interval. And obviously you can change the format there. So I'm gonna just leave that in the default. Here's another thing you can do. Now at this point, the camera is gonna focus on the point of interest uh, at the angle um, that the altitude that you set in the flight plan is going to allow it to. Okay, so, but here's what you can do. You can actually set this by tapping on that. Uh, nope, that's not the right one. Tapping on this one. This allows you to set the angle that the camera will change to mid-flight. So let's say we'll just keep it at 45 and we're gonna drop that right in here. So the camera is going to tilt to 45 degrees at this point in the flight plan. Isn't that cool? Okay, now the blue icon allows you to uh, rotate the quad in flight. So let's just go ahead and pop down in there. So that's something you can do as well. I mean, you can really get really, really creative with this. Um, and it, it, it actually blows me away at how much functionality there is. It's a little bit intimidating though, honestly for me, uh, because you're not in control. <laughs> so, But 
uh, I've, I've done this a couple of times already. I figure after doing it several more times, I might start to be a little more adventurous with some of the things that you can do, some of the functionality, and I can imagine getting some amazing, amazing video and pictures. So just imagine you're uh, uh, at the coast, let's say you're on the coastline of a beach, and there's a lighthouse, let's say, uh, two or 300 meters out. You can set up a flight plan, have it go out to that uh, lighthouse and do a point of interest orbit around that lighthouse, taking pictures along the way, and it'll come on back. It, that is just awesome. And the orbit that this can do uh, in an automated fashion is gonna be much more uh, smooth than what I can do personally. I'm pretty good, I'm getting better at doing you know, manual orbiting and, 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 and panoramas and stuff like that, uh, but uh, this is gonna be really, really, really smooth. A great tool for, for getting that. Okay, kind of so the other thing that's very important is where you land, right? You want to make sure you're landing over land or um, you're landing somewhere where you can actually retrieve the quad. So that's why, and that's the landing icon, um, that's going to be waypoint number eight, which is essentially waypoint number one. And the reason why it's, it's uh, eight is one is because we did that closed loop, remember? Uh, so I recommend doing that. You could just set a waypoint very close to where uh, the first uh, uh, waypoint is, which is the launch point. You could do that as well, um, but I think it just makes more sense to close that loop and have it just come right on back from where um, it took off. Okay. So once you're ready to go, you'll just come down here and push the play button and the quad will take off and execute the flight plan. And you can actually watch it. You'll have a live uh, video feed here uh, that will allow you to see what the quad is seeing. And it's gonna show you its progression as it goes through the waypoints. So it's really, really cool. Okay, so now that we've gone through the setup, let's go out and execute the flight plan and see what this uh, turns, how this turns out. I'm really, uh, really interested to see how this turns out. All right, let's go.